Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and uh, in this section we'll be looking at properties of logarithms. So these are things that will uh, help us to solve equations and do a number of things. So uh, the properties of logarithms actually correspond to some properties of exponential functions, um, or rules of exponents, I should say. But um, let's go ahead and go through them quickly. So uh, there's three main ones that we'll start with. So if you have the log base b of some number m and you add it, to the log base b of another number n. Uh, this is the same thing as the log base b of m times n. Um, two, uh, if you have the log base b of m minus the log base b of n, this can be written as the log base b of m divided by n <clears throat> and 3 uh, if you have the log base b of m to some power p we can bring that p out as multiplication and write it as p times the log of m log base b of m excuse me so a lot of times we'll just be working with either base 10 or natural log because if we're solving equations we can pick which uh, ever uh, logarithm we want uh, to use. Uh, so basically the above properties can be used to expand or combine logarithms, as well as solve exponential equations. So, um, I mean, let me let me just highlight uh, quickly the the laws of exponents that these relate to, uh, just over here on the side. So, um, recall uh, we have some exponent rules that maybe you might have thought were kind of similar here. So basically, uh, if you would have say a to the m times a to the n. This multiplication turns into addition in the exponent, a to the m plus n. Two, if you would have a to the m over a to the n, this is a to the m minus n. And three, uh, if you have a to the m raised to the nth power, this becomes a to the m times n. So all of those rules actually are where the logarithms come from. Um, so you can use that actually to prove these things. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples uh, to see how these properties can be used. Um, so you can use them kind of in two ways. You can use them to expand logarithms into simpler logarithms, or you can use them to kind of condense logarithms and put together as a single logarithm. So let's, let's start with an example where um, uh, we try to So your textbook has uh, some exercises in this section, um, and the instructions are write each expression in terms of simpler uh, logarithmic forms. And you can kind of take that to mean just expand. Expand everything as much as possible. So let's look at a couple of those. So let's say we have uh, something like, oh, I don't know, maybe um, the log of uh, 1000 x squared y cubed. 
Well, we've got three things being multiplied together. So uh, essentially you can start by writing this as the log of 1000 plus the log of x squared plus the log of y cubed. And that is by property number one. We are taking the arguments, the 1000, the x squared, and the y cubed that are multiplied by each other and we're just expanding them with the same base. So this is the common logarithm. Um, so that means base 10. So the log of 1000 is just 10 to the third power. So that's three. Um, and then what can we do with the remaining two? Uh, we can actually bring the exponents down in front. That's property number three. So the squared uh, that's being applied to x, we can write that in front as multiplication. So two times the log of x plus three times the log of y. Doing the same thing for the exponent of three being applied to y. So this is by property number three. And now you can see the thing that were the, the things inside the logarithm are as simple as possible. So that's all you would want to do if an exercise lists something like that, expand or write in terms of simpler logarithmic forms. Um, let's look at another one. Maybe we have, um, oh, let's say uh, the natural log of, uh, maybe we have uh, oh, let's say x to the seventh divided by the square root of y. Okay, so for this one, uh, we have two things that are being divided. So uh, what we can do is we can take that quotient to subtraction by property number two. So this would be the natural log of x to the seventh minus the natural log of the square root of y. So this is by property number two. And then uh, we can bring the seven down in front for the first one. Um, and then the second one, remember, uh, the square root of y is really y to the one half power. Um, so the first one we used property number three, and then we're gonna use property number three again um, to bring that one half down in front. So we end up with just seven natural log of x minus one half natural log of y. And again, this is by property number three. So nothing too wild there. Um, we can have ones where we wanna put them together as well. So this is kind of the reverse process, but um, we can go the other way on the property. So let's look at an example where we wanna instead write everybody as a single logarithm. So in this example, let's say we want to write as a single logarithm. So A, let's say we have the, I don't know, let's change it up a little bit. Let's say the log base um, um, 11 of X plus the log base 11 of 3Y minus the log base 11 of 7. So as I mentioned before, kind of in the future, we'll, we'll end up where basically we'll primarily only be seeing common logarithm and natural logarithm. But when you're first introduced, sometimes it's a good idea to just uh, work with some other ones. Okay, so the first two terms can be put together via multiplication. So we can write that. And again, the only reason we're able to do this is because all of them have the same base. So we get the log base 11 of x times 3y, which normally we write in alphabetical order. So 3xy minus the log base 11 of seven, so this is by property number one, taking the sum of logs to the product of their arguments. And then uh, we can put the final two logarithms together because they're being subtracted, so this becomes a quotient. So three xy over seven, so this is by property number two.
All right, uh, maybe one more of these. Um, so B, um, a lot of times, so this one we have five times the natural log of X uh, plus three times the natural log of Y. And a lot of times when I see people, uh, they see a sum of logarithms and they get anxious, they wanna put them together you know, via multiplication. But if there's something sitting in front of the logarithm, you can't do that. We first have to apply property number three to put the coefficient in front back inside the logarithm before we can um, apply property number one. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna apply property three to both terms to start. So this would be the natural log of x to the fifth plus the natural log of y cubed. And again, this is by property number three. And then <clears throat> we can put these two together as the natural log of uh, x to the fifth times y cubed. And that is by property number one. Okay, so those are the basics of using these properties. Um, one warning that I wanna provide you on these um, is we, we aren't really taking um, products to products ever or sums to sums. So, um, so basically we wanna make sure uh, not to apply these in other circumstances. So these properties in other circumstances, let's say. So um, for example, I've seen students do things like say the log of five times the log of three, this is not equal to the log of 15. You can't multiply like that. So um, what would be equal to the log of 15? The log of five plus the log of three, something like this would be equal to the log of 15. So this is, this is incorrect, the top line and the second line is correct. So don't mess things up like that. And similarly, if it were division, it would not be five thirds. Um, it would have to be log of five minus log of three to be the log of five thirds. Um, okay, so let's look at um, another one where we can kind of uh, get some approximations. So uh, there used to be tables and, and people would use uh, books and stuff like that and, and slide rules and logarithms were actually quite useful for um, getting approximations for multiplying very big and very small numbers. Um, we don't typically do that anymore because everyone has, you know, basically super calculators in their pockets uh, via, you know, cell phones and things like that. Um, but uh, helping us understand the properties and how that sort of thing might might have gone, let, let's consider the following example. Um, so let's let's say. Um, so using, let's say the log of two is approximately 0.3. Um, the log of three is approximately 0.7, or excuse me, 0.47. And let's say the log of five is approximately 0.7. What we wanna do is evaluate a few, a few values. So let's say um, a, let's say we wanna evaluate, uh, well, how much is the log of six? Well, we can split that apart, right? Because we know the log of six would be the same thing as the log of two plus the log of three by property number one. So then we can use those approximations above and we can actually get um, 
So we know the log of 2 is about 0.3. We know the log of 3 is about 0.47. And so this would be about 0.77 as the value of the log of 6. So we turn something that looked like a, uh, you know, that maybe we wouldn't be able to do um, into something that we could figure out a good approximation for very quickly by using the properties of logarithms. Um, so let's look at some other ones. Maybe uh, we could also do, you know, the log of two thirds. That would be very similar. That would then just be the log of two minus the log of three. So this would come out to, in this example, 0.3 minus 0.47. So we would end up with a value of negative 0.17. Uh, do we have any that use property three? Um, sure, why don't we look at um, the log of the square root of five? Well, uh, by property number three, this would be the same thing as one half times the log of five. So up here, I forgot to mention this was by property two. And down here, we're using property number three. Again, remembering that the uh, square root just stands for the exponent of 1 half. So this would be approximately 1 half times uh, the value of the log of 5, which they told us was 0.7. So 1 half times 0.7, so that would come out to 0.35. And you can check that all of these are pretty reasonable on your calculator. Um, let's try one more. Let's say how about the... Um, log of the fourth root of 30. Okay, so we're gonna have to combine properties here. So let's first just remember that the uh, fourth root would stand for the one fourth power. So we can first write this as one fourth times the log of 30. Uh, we don't need that parentheses there. So one fourth times the log of 30. So this is by property number three. And then uh, the log of 30 is the same thing as the log of six times five. So this would then become one fourth log of six plus log of five. So that would be by property number one. So then we would get one fourth times the log of six plus one fourth times the log of five. That's just uh, by the distributive law. And then uh, from part A, we got an approximation for the log of six. From part A, our approximation for the log of six was 0.77. So basically we will have um, one fourth times 0.77. And then one fourth times the uh, approximation for the log of five, which we had as 0.7. So this is um, by um, part A. We're using that to get the approximation for the log of six. And then I'm gonna cheat and use my calculator to figure this part out. Uh, so 0 0.25 times 0 0.77 plus 0 0.25 times 0 0.7. And that comes out to 0.3675. So um, that shows us how we can use those things to um, evaluate some logarithms. Um, again, we'll see uh, these things being applied to solving equations um, in the future. So let's talk about a couple other properties that um, maybe you have already figured out, but uh, you know, 
we haven't stated explicitly. So we also have the inverse properties. So there are two of those. Um, so one basically says if you want to do the log base b of b to some power, so let's say b to the x, the log base b and the exponential function b to the x, right, basically we, we said they're inverse functions. That means if you compose them with each other, they'll cancel. So that just equals x. And the second version of that, if you would have b raised now to the log base b of x, this would equal x, but we have to be a little bit careful. This is only for x bigger than zero. And the reason is, uh, if you did order of operations here, the x is first put inside the logarithm and the exponent and uh, the domain of the logarithm, as we saw last time, only has positive input. So there's only positive real numbers as the domain of the logarithm. Um, whereas in one, uh, b to the x, no matter what the value for x is, b to the x is always going to be a positive number. So there's no domain uh, conditions there. So these are some inverse properties. Um, so, uh, you know, in particular, um, we have them for the two special logarithms that we talked about. Um, so in particular, uh, so let's say 1a, we know that the... Um, Let's say the log of 10 to the x is equal to x, and 1b, the log, uh, excuse me, um, doing that backwards. Um, if you do 10 to the log of 10 to the x, uh, this would be equal to x for x greater than 0. And then Let's say we had, um, actually, sorry, that should be 1a and 2a, mislabeling things, 1a and 2a. Um, and let's say we did 1b, let's say we did it with a natural log, what would that look like? Well, if we did the natural log of e to the x, this would equal x, and uh, 2b, if we did the uh, e raised to the natural log of x, this would equal x, again, for x greater than 0. So basically, kind of this is like, if we box this one off, we would say this is special case number 1. And then below with the other one, the uh, natural logarithm, we would call this special case number two. They're both basically just uh, four examples of the general inverse pro properties for logarithms. Um, so, you know, just looking at some basic equations, we, uh, we, we were already kind of implicitly using that when we were looking at continuous form of exponential functions. Um, so let me see, can, I, can we do some, uh, just some really simple examples? Um, yeah, I'm sure we can. Let's example. Let's say... Uh, Uh, let's say solve. So we'll, we'll get into some more interesting ones next time. But once we have these inverse properties, you can really kind of see how these are put to work with functions. So let's say um, a, uh, these are just going to be very, very basic. Let's say we have 10 to the x is equal to 12.5. Well, what you do then is you just take the log of both sides. So the log of 10 to the x will equal the log of 12.5 and from inverse property number one this is just x and then the log of 12.5 you can do on your calculator uh, which comes out to about 1.10 so I should use the squiggly equal sign to 
note that I'm rounding. This is just an approximation. So this is about 1.10. Um, and this is basically, um, so that's property number one. So that's A maybe. Um, B, we could do one with say the natural log, same, same thing. So if you saw some equation that said E to the three X equals seven, uh, you could start by taking the natural log of both sides. So you would have the natural log of e to the 3x. And that would be the natural log of 7. And then on the left, we would have 3x. Um, and then we would just leave this as the natural log of 7. And then you would just have to divide by 3 here. And then we will have solved for x. And we could plug that again into our calculator to get an approximation. Um, again, a lot of standard calculators are just going to have the two log buttons, the common log and the natural log. Um, again, that's one of the reasons these come up so much in solving equations. Um, okay, so 0.65 would be the answer there. Uh, we could also go the other way. Um, let's say C using the other property. So let's say we have uh, the log of X equals... Uh, 1.4. Well, uh, to solve this, we would have to use the other inverse property. So to, to get rid of the logarithm here, we would have to make both sides the exponent of 10. So 10 to the log of x would equal 10 to the 1.4. And again, 10 to the 1.4, you know, we don't have any problems with uh, uh, x coming out crazy. So uh, 10 to the 1.4 in the calculator. Uh, that comes out, uh, say, 25.12. So that's how you can use the second um, property there to... Uh, you can use the second property to uh, solve equations. So those equations that you're solving are actually when you have the... Um, the variable as the input of a logarithm. Maybe let's do one last one. So D, let's say we have the natural log of, I don't know, 5x equals um, negative one. So in this case, we would have to make each side of the equation the exponent of E. So sometimes that said exponentiate with base E. So then when you cancel, you actually have 5x on this side and e to the negative one is the same as one over e divide both sides by five so after you've divided both sides by five there um, we end up with uh, x on the left hand side and then the other side um, again remember when you divide fractions this is one over five e and we could approximate that as well um, so one divided by five e comes out to about 0 0.07 if we're just rounding in two places, 0 0.07. And that would be it. Um, so those are the basic inverse properties. So as we move forward and solve more difficult equations, we'll uh, combine these properties with some of the uh, other ones and, and look at some more difficult equations. So maybe we'll solve ones where the bases aren't either 10 or E. Um, anyway, so uh, this is Dr. Lennon signing off.